All right, so today at SF Custom Cycles, I've got my nephew's TDR 125 here. I think it's a 17, 18 model. I bought a 150cc big ball kit off eBay for it. I'm gonna go through the build uh, and pretty much run through what needs to be done. So if anyone wishes to do this at home or whatever, um, you've got a bit of guidance on what goes on. The cylinder itself, when it came from eBay, I ran a bore dial um, gauge through it to check it. The piston was super tight in some areas. So I've actually honed the cylinder um, to get it as true as possible. Obviously non-clamped um, applied, but just to allow that piston to be free and get a bit of clearance and piston the ball clearance. I'll go through the ring end gaps um, and get it all organized. It's come with a roller rocker style setup, uh, which I'll go through as well. But the thing is with this, it's cool to put a kit on, but we've got another 25cc's displacement in the thing. So I'll have to look at the jetting. Um, obviously just tweak the air fuel mixture as we go. And yeah, I'll just go through it. There's some mods that we can do on the way to get the thing breathing a little bit better and let that motor work a bit better in its harmony for an update. So we'll make a start. First point of call. I know you'll be watching this, Jacko. Not overly happy. Alright, I've got the exhaust off. Just remember to put your WD-40 on things that are dry and a bit snotty. I applied it to these prior, but I've applied after as well, just so when we put it together, we're not running everything dry. So, we'll get in and get this uh, thing timed up, and then we'll remove the uh, carby boot for the intake, and obviously just pull off some of the manning hardware and get in, see what we can do. Alright, so just timing the engine, and what I'm going to do is we'll rotate so we've got intake down, up, exhaust, down, up, intake. So we come back around to our top dead center, which we'll see in here if I can see it. And there's our marks there. Rightio, so I'm going to check the lash on the rockers. Um, I'd say these would be three three odd foul, but typically rule of thumb, we've got some side to side movement, which we do front and rear, which is good. So we're not seeing the tight inlet. If we were, we'd see the engine lean out. All that's looking good. However, it is coming apart and it's all gonna be adjusted. But the issue was with the plug, is the plug was running quite rich. And I wonder why, because the airspeed coming in is a bit knackered because someone hasn't cleaned their air cleaner. Alright, so next up, can covers off. That was times up the top, but obviously just on rotation of taking it out and smooth. No, Kim chain tension is out, so all we do now is get the cylinder head bolts off. Um, and then we will be able to get that, uh, that head off. So I'm going to go through some checks on the pull down, even though we're going into something new. I still will go through, you know, a typical um, ring and gap check and stuff like that and see what the conditions like of the bike. Um, and like I said, it is all about your maintenance on how your motor is going to perform over time. You've got to keep up the speed with this stuff, so we'll keep getting on. Rightio, 125, 150. So there is obviously a distinctive size difference. Now, just as a, a rough rule of thumb, just to give you guys an indication, we are working with 57.10, so to speak. Like I said, it's only rough just to give you guys an indication. There's a three mil difference um, in sizes, so we're adequate. So what we need to know is, or do as we go, is obviously have a an allowance of fuel difference with the carby. So I'll check the pilot jet, main jet, um, and probably have to lift a lift the needle um, at clip position. So that's that's our piston difference there. All right, we'll quickly measure the bore and we can work out our ring end gap then. Obviously this has had a hone, so we've probably just lathered a little bit of excess out, um, so to speak. So we're 2.261, 2.260 even. So we're going four thousandths per inch of bore. Um, so we'll work that out now and then we'll suit our ring end gap to that. Rightio. So one ring in and I usually seat it down to just past the all ring groove itself. You'll see it's this far in the bore. Now, we're working around 9 thou ring in gap. Now, here's an 8. We're getting quite easy. We'll go to 
the next one, I'll just do this quickly, but yeah, just remember with whatever your bore size is. Hang on a second. Whatever your bore size is in inches, just remember to times it by. Obviously, this being just like a standard sort of application kids' bike, cast piston stuff, four thousandth per inch of bore. So we've got a eight going at the moment and that gets in quite easy so i have measured these we are running at nine and ten absolutely happy with that obviously once it's ran in it's got a better its way in you know if we see another thousands out so be it you know the thing's going to seal up nice anyway so we'll give that cylinder a clean um just so if there's any debris in there from when i've done the home job we've got these little roller rockers here and some sort of little hot cam shaft i don't know what the specs are on it but we'll give this a clean up and then um, I've got one piston uh, pin clip in so far. So we'll be using assembly lube on everything. So upon startup, we've got something there and we'll get all the rocker gear in and everything else. I'll double check the oil rings, which they usually are a little bit over from what we're expecting anyway for ring end gap, which is fine. And we'll dummy this thing up, uh, get it together. And get going yeah just with assembly if you're doing this from home just remember the rings do have um, an R so I've just marked that so that goes up and in here as you can see we've got RN so that's our second ring and even if you have to put your two dots on to see now it's a second and a dot for the top whatever whatever works for you guys but um, just remember they got to go up bound 